Hey, I'm Kyle, and you're watching Tech Squid TV. In our last video, we went over how to use Docker in five minutes. If you haven't seen that yet or don't know what Docker is, freeze where you are right now, click that link in the description or up in the right. It's only five minutes, we'll wait. In this video, we're gonna learn how to use Docker Compose to control multiple containers to create a WordPress website. That's exactly the same way we made TechSquidTV.com. Thank you to Hover.com for sponsoring this episode. We'll show you how to build a website, but if you want to share it with the world, you have to get an awesome domain name with any of the hundreds of cool domain extensions like .me, .design, and .tv. Get 10% off your first domain name and support the show by going to Hover.com forward slash TechSquid. What is Docker Compose? So back in the day, a program or app used to be a single executable of some sort, and you'd hit run, and you'd be done. That's not so much the case anymore. Modern applications are comprised of microservices, or modular components that communicate with each other to make the full application. This makes it easy to maintain different portions of an app separately, as well as making it easy to spin up more containers for a given service if you want to scale up in the future. If you already know Docker, Docker Compose is easy to get started. If you don't know Docker, you know where to go. We just talked about this. Let's learn by doing and make a simple WordPress website. Similar to how a Docker file is a set of instructions to build a Docker image, the docker-compose.yaml file instructs how to run our Docker Compose setup. We'll start with a blank docker-compose.yaml file. YAML is just a simple format for writing data, similar to JSON or XML. If you aren't familiar with YAML, we'll have some links in the description. We start with a version number, which is currently three, and then we define our services. Services is where we want to define what Docker containers we want to run. A simple WordPress website can be made using only two services. The first one is the WordPress container. We'll name our service WordPress, although you could name it anything you like, such as blog or website. WordPress will have a few properties that we want to add. First of all, you want to define the Docker image that we'll be using, and WordPress offers an official image on the Docker Hub. If you aren't aware, we covered this in our Docker tutorial, which you can find below how many times have we said, but the Docker Hub is a repository of tons of freely available images you can use for Docker. We'll use the WordPress image and just use the latest tag. As an added bonus in this setup, every time we launch Docker Compose this way, we'll be using the latest version of WordPress, making updating incredibly easy. Now, because containers are temporary by nature, any data that we create will be lost if the containers are restarted. For WordPress specifically, this means we would lose things like images and plugins, themes, all of that would get deleted. To get around that, we can create a Docker volume for persisting data. This is a pretty quick intro to Docker Compose, but volumes in Docker are amazing, and you should read more about them in the docs, which of course are in the description below. Volumes are file systems you create outside of a container that are then mounted on the inside of that container once they are spun up. In a fancier config, this could even be a cloud storage volume like Amazon's S3. Because the data is mounted outside of the container, and in our case, that will just be on the host machine that we run this on, if the WordPress container is ever restarted or goes down, all of the data will be safe and mounted again after the container goes back up. In Docker Compose, that looks like this. At the bottom of our Compose file, we'll create a volumes key at the same level as services. Here, we're gonna define two volumes that we're gonna need for this specific example. I'm gonna use WP underscore data and db underscore data. Obviously, you can name yours whatever you want. The first one will hold all of our data for WordPress, and the other will hold our database information. We'll come back to that database thing. Now, back under our WordPress services, you can define volumes, and under that, you can input a list of volumes. We'll only need wp underscore data. After the volume name, we want to define where we are going to mount this file system in the container, separated by a colon. This means that we are picking the folder inside of the container that we actually want to live outside safely in our wp underscore data volume. For WordPress specifically, in this case, all of the relevant data lives at forward slash var forward slash www forward slash HTML. This way, all the static WordPress content is backed up and mounted automatically every time the container is restarted. Let's press on. WordPress on? I'm sorry, it's automatic. The WordPress container we want to be able to access from a web browser, so what we need to do is expose a port from the container and map it to a port on the host machine. We will only need a single port exposed, port 80 for HTTP, which our web browser will default to. The first number is the host's port of our server, but we need to map that to an internal port for WordPress, which will also be 80. Notice this is HTTP traffic with no SSL, We'll be having a Docker with SSL tutorial coming up soon. There are actually ways to get this to work with SSL just fine, but we'll get to that in a future video. Now that our ports are defined, we have one more property for WordPress to add, and that's the environment variables. Environment variables allow you to pass some information into our containers. Check the Docker Hub page for the image that you are using. They should have a list of what environment variables are optional or not. For WordPress at minimum, we need WordPress underscore DB underscore user, WordPress underscore DB underscore password, and WordPress underscore DB underscore host. 
This is the information WordPress needs to log into a database. We haven't made that yet, so let's leave that blank for just a minute. We need a database so that WordPress can interact with it and store all kinds of user information, our posts, or comments, and so on. So let's create a new service called DB. Pick your Docker image again. For this, we'll be using MariahDB, which is a MySQL replacement. You can use MySQL if you want. Now we wanna keep all of our database information after any kind of shutdown again, the same way we did with WordPress. So let's use that DB underscore data volume, add that to our DB service, and map it to where the data for MySQL lives. We'll have some environment variables to set to. On the Docker Hub page, for every image, there should be a list of required and optional variables that you can set. Some will even come with a Docker Compose example. We have to set the MySQL root password, give a name to our database with MySQL database, and create a MySQL user and password for that user. Once you've created all of that, we have what we need to finish the WordPress service. The WordPress underscore DB user and password we just created, so we can fill that in. The DB host is looking for the IP address and port of the MySQL server. What Docker Compose does for us is it actually allows us to use the service name in place of an IP. So DB is all we need for the IP address, and that is awesome. For the port, we'll use 3306, which is just the standard port for MySQL. And we're almost done. We just wanna add two more things. To both of our services, we are going to add restart always. Now, if one or both of our containers crash for some reason or otherwise shut down unexpectedly, they'll attempt to come back online right away and avoid any potential downtime. And now, just one more thing. What if WordPress is faster and tried to connect to the database before it was ready? Luckily, Docker Compose also gives us the depends on key, which will keep the service from starting until another one is ready. We can add this to the WordPress service and reference DB to make sure that we don't run into that problem. And that right there is a super simple WordPress Docker Compose script. We have a WordPress container and a database container that will run together and be able to communicate with each other. Let's start up our Docker Compose script with docker-compose up tack d. We have to run this command in the same directory as our script. It will be looking for a docker-compose.yaml file, although you could pass in a custom file if you choose. Up instructs Docker Compose to spin up those containers, and tack D runs our Docker Compose setup as a daemon or in the background. That way we could close our shell and it will still stay up. Since we exposed port 80 of our WordPress container, we can head over to a web browser and check out our website at the local host. From here, you can run through the setup and you're in. You could take this same script and upload it to a popular VPS provider online like DigitalOcean, AWS, or Vulture. And just for a few dollars a month, you'd have yourself a WordPress site up in a few minutes. There's just two problems. First problem, you are probably going to want SSL for your site. The good news is it's easy, and the bad news is we're gonna save that for another video. The second problem, if you want people to visit your website, you probably don't wanna just give them the IP address of your server. The easiest way to fix that is to head over to the sponsor of the show, hover.com forward slash techsquid, and get 10% off your first domain name. Check out the Find a Domain Name tool and get tons of suggestions for domains available today. Did you know .app was a domain extension? Hover did. Thank you again for watching and to hover.com for supplying you with that 10% off. Again, hover.com forward slash techsquid. Up next, we're going to be finally building that 23 terabyte home server. We tried before, but there were some complications. And now, to go do that.